Section 1. The Italian Renaissance Trade with Asia It seems strange that the Black Death has any pos- po- posti- positive results, but that, but th- that is what happened. Though the death tro- toll was terrible, the dis- disease didn't damage farmland, buildings, ships, machines, or gold. People who survived used these things to raise more food and make new products. Wages rose as workers knew in short supply um, demanded higher pay. Um, Europe's economy began to grow again. As more goods became available, prices went down, trade increased, and new produce, products appeared in markets. Some of these goods came from thousands of miles away. To learn how these items ended up in Europe, we need to go back in time. The Sea Oak Road reopens. The Chinese and Robins did business together from about 81 to 200. Produ- products moved between for east and west along the Silk Road. This was a caravan route that started in China and ended at the Mediterranean Sea. When the Roman Empire and the Han Dynasty fell, soldiers no longer protect free travelers. Um, as a result, use of Silk Road declined. Um, then in 12,000s, the Mongols took over China. They once again made the road safer for travelers and traders. Um, among these um, traders were a remarkable man um, from Venice named Marco Polo and his family. The Polos traveled from Europe to China for, where they saw money, ama- many amazing things such as paper money and coal used for fuel. In China, they almost met with the Mongol Empire, um, Kublai Khan. He wanted them to stay in the court and made Marco Polo a government official. The Poles spent 20 years in Asia before um, before returning to Venice. Um, there, there, a writer helped Polo record his journey. Polo's descriptions um, made many Europeans cautious, curious about Asia. People began to desire aging goods and trades between Asia and Europe grew. Italian merchandise, mer- merchants organized much of this trade. Trade cities in Italy. By the 1300s, four northern Italian cities had become trading centers Florence, Genoa, Milan, and Venice. These cities bursted with activity. Um, shoppers there could buy beautiful things from Asia. Residents could meet strangers from faraway places and hear many languages on the streets. The Italian cities played two important roles in trade. Uh, one role was uh, as ports of the Mediterranean Sea. Um, one role was the port on the Mediterranean Sea. Venice and Geo- Genoa were the main port cities. Merchant ships brought, brought spices and other luxuries from Asia to the cities harbors. Merchants then slipped the goods all across Europe. The other role was a manufacturing centers. Um, the, each city specialized in 13 workers. Venice produced glass. Um, in Milan workers made weapons and silk. Florence was a center for weaving wool into cloth. All of these economic activity put more money in all merchants' pockets. Some Italian merchant family became incredi- incredibly wealthy. Eventually, this wealth would help make Italy the focus of European culture. How did this happen? Florence, one Florence, stands out as the example of great trade and wealth. Coming into Italy during the 1300s, Florence's wealth began with the word trade. Um, but banking increased that wealth. Bankers in Florence kept money for merchants from all over Europe. The bankers also earned money by making loans and charging interest. Interest is a fee that lend, um, lenders share charge people who borrow money from them. The fee is usually a certain percentage of the loan. The greatest of the Florence bankers were the Medellici family. In the early 1400s, they were the richest family in the city. (coughs) (coughs) Richest family in the cities. Their fortune gave the Medicis Political power too. You see, in most big government, um, her, the head of the family ruled the city. By 1434, um, Cosim- Cosimo di Medici, um, um, ruled Florence. Cosimo di Menzi, 
um, wanted Florence to hire artists to decorate his palace. He also paid architects to redesign many of Florence's buildings. Cosimo um, de Merci, uh, Medici um, also valued education. After all, his banks needed workers who could read, write, and understand math. To improve education, he built libraries and collected books. Under the Medici's, um, Florence became the center of Italian art, literature, and culture. In other Italian cities, rich families tried to outdo each other in their support of the arts and learning. Beginning of the Renaissance, this love of art and education was a key feature of the time we call the Renaissance. Um, the Renaissance means um, rebirth and refers uh, to the period that followed Europe's Middle Ages. What was being reborn, interested in art and literature, revived, especially in ancient Greek and Rome work, Roman works. Um, appreciation also developed for the importance of people as individuals. These and ideas were very from those of the Middle Ages. Italian writers and artists. New ways of thinking emerged during this renaissance. At the same time, the period brought a renewed emphasis on the past. These trends inspired Italian writers and artists to produce many brilliant works. Sources on information. During the Middle Ages, most thinkers in Europe and had devoted themselves to religious um, study by the 1300s. However, scholars had begun to broaden their interests. They and studied poetry, history, art, and the Greek and Latin language. Today, these subjects are known as the humanities because they explore human activities rather than the physical world or the nature of God. The study of humanities led to a movement called humanism, a way of thinking and learning that stresses the importance of human abil <coughs> abilities and actions. Italian writers, I, I mean, the interest in humanities um, was the linker of rediscovery of ancient writings. In 1300s, Turks conquered much of the Byzantine Empire. Scholars seeking to escape the Turks fled to Italy. With them, they carried rare works of literature. Many of the works they brought to Italy were ancient classical writings, such as works by Greek thinkers. Scholars were... Uh, were excited by the return of these writings and went looking for Asian Latin texts, texts, texts too. They found many in monasteries where monks had preserved works by Roman writers. As scholars rediscovered these glory, um, glories of Greece and Rome, they longed for a renewal of classical culture. Renaissance artists and architects were also ruins of Roman buildings, still stood in Italy. These ancient ruins and statues inspired painters and sculptures. Italian writers. Many of the Italian writers contributed great works of literature to the Renaissance. The earliest was the politician and poet Dante Alighieri. Um, before Dante, most medieval authors had written in, written in Latin, the language of this church of the church. Dante wrote in Italian, which was the common language of the people. This showed that he considered Italian, the people's language, to be as good as Latin. A later Italian writer, Niccolo Machiavelli, um, was also a politician in 1513. He wrote a short book called The Prince. It gave leaders advice on how they should rule. Machiavelli didn't care about theories of or what should work. He was only interested in what really happened in war and peace. He argued that to be successful rulers had to focus on the here and now, not on theories. Machiavelli thought that rulers thought sometimes had to ruthless to the um, keep order. Um, in the way Machiavelli serves as a good example of Renaissance interest in human behavior and society. Italian art and artists. During the Renaissance, Italian artists create some of the most beautiful, beautiful paintings and sculptures in the world. Um, ideas about the <coughs> value of human life affected the art of the time. 
Art shows people, and the more reliable Renaissance artists studied the human body and drew what they saw. However, as they guides, many of the human beings they drew was perfect as Greek Greek gods. Also, artists also used the new technique called perspective, a way of showing death, and created by various means. For example, shown smaller than people in the front, up close, while distant images are made to look hazier. Also, parallel lines such as on floor tiles are drawn diagonally. This is another way to give the illusion of distance between the people or objects shown. Two masters. <coughs> There were several good Italian Renaissance artists, but two stands out um, above the rest. Um, each is an example of what we call a Renaissance parson, someone one who can do particularly anything well. Um, one of these great Italian masters was Michelangelo. Um, he had many talents. Michelangelo, Mike, Michelangelo had had many talents. Michelangelo designed buildings and wrote poetry, carved structures, and painted magnificent paintings. I mean pictures. Perhaps uh, his most famous work is a painting that covers the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. The muscular human figures um, in the immense painting remind the viewers of Greek or Roman statues. The true genius of the Renaissance was Leonardo da Vinci. In addition to being an expert painter, Leonardo was a sculptor, um, sculptor, um, inter architect, inventor, engineer, town planner, and map maker. Both nature and technology fascinated La and Leonardo. Um, detailed drawings of plants, animals, and machines fill the sketchbook that he left behind. To make his art more real, Leonardo um, studied anatomy, the structure of human bodies. He also showed human emotions in his work. His famous portrait of Mona Lisa, for example, shows the lady smiling. <laughs>